This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Reign. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about the story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 111 Confessions Valerius groaned. His head was splitting. Had he drunk in Prosia again? It felt like that, plus someone was jackhammering into his skull. He groaned again. Someone lightly slapped his cheeks. He groaned a third time. Get up, sleeping beauty! Alarian hissed. Valerius scowled. He would never drink ambrosia with Alarian. Or, if he did, he would pass out away from the green dragon king. Yet the cheek slapping continued, with more force than was strictly necessary. Sleeping beauty! Alarian continued, seemingly enjoying calling him that and slapping him at the same time with impunity. I'm awake, Valerius growled as he batted away the slapping hands and covered his face with his arms. Then open your pretty eyes, sleeping. Stop calling me that, or I will, will do something terrible to you, and I will open them in a moment, Valerius snarled as he curled over onto his side. His head was killing him. Rosiel, too, was drowsy and irritable. Its stomach hurt. Its head throbbed. It didn't want to open its eyes either. It wanted to sleep. But Valerius knew that neither of them should be sleeping. Both of them were forgetting something. Something important. There was also something else. Iolaire was not there. And Caden wasn't either. Valerius' eyelids flew open and he had Alarian by the throat. Where is Caden? Valerius snarled. Alarian's eyes flared green for a moment as Valerius squeezed. Their teeth were bared. Let me go, you big black oaf! Alarian growled back. Valerius tried to push his senses outwards to find the other dragon shifter, but he was simply unable to. Razio was up on its legs, but unsteadily, unable to unfurl its wings. Not until you tell me where Caden is. You were to protect him! I did! I mean, he protected us! Alarian got out between gritted teeth. You fell unconscious, and I... I was incapacitated. So he took charge. And now he's out there interrogating Landry or the behemoth. Alarian tipped his head towards a smashed window. The wind was whipping the blackout shade back and forth. Why didn't you go with him? Valerius cried and tried to get up only to fall back down again. Same reason you couldn't open those pretty eyes. The behemoth did something to both of us. Alarian said with a shake of his head, I cannot shift. And Caden, Caden does not need help. After what happened in the hallway, he is perhaps safer without either of us there. It was then that Valerius felt Caden's mind. The white dragon shifter was relieved he was all right. Valerius, however, was not relieved to find Caden alone with Landry. He could see through Caden's eyes. Landry was on the ground before him. She was encased in an icy prison except for her head. She was snarling and promising vengeance upon Caden if he did not release her this minute. I'm coming to you, Valerius said as he struggled to sit up. No, Caden commanded, and Valerius felt the command actually keeping him lying on his back. Recover. I've got this. If I need you, you will know. Rest. Caden, I will not let you face the behemoth alone, Valerius insisted. I cannot be worried about you and focused on this, Caden told him. Valerius' mouth opened. I am not weak, I am. You are the strongest person I know, Caden told him with warmth. But the behemoth did something to you, and I won't have a repeat of it. The sickness that both he and Raziel were experiencing was debilitating, more than debilitating. He couldn't remember feeling this bad in a very long time. Whatever happened to me could happen to you, Valerius insisted. Caden was quiet for a moment. No, no, I don't think so. I can't explain it, but I think Iolair is resistant to the behemoth. It may somehow stem from its abilities to turn people from the spirit to human forms. I don't want to trust hunches, Caden. I want you here and safe. Valerius sounded like a child as he said this. He felt warmth and love from Caden. I know, me too. But I am all right. You need to trust me. I need you and Alarian to stay where you are. 
Valerius grimaced, but he was so weak that he couldn't even continue the expression for long. Please tell me that you will be careful. Of course. Rest, Valerius, Cain directed. We'll be together soon. Valerius hit the back of his head against the floor and groaned. Raziel let out a pitiful stream of fire and sank back down onto its belly, too. They were no good to Caden until they recovered from whatever this was, and Caden sounded confident, sure in a way that Valerius could not gainsay. This was Caden's strength. This was his gift. Caden has things well in hand, Valerius explained when Alarian cocked his head to the side, as he had remained silent too long. He doesn't need assistance. Yes, as I said, I am not surprised. He's a firecracker, our little white dragon. You still want to strangle me, just for fun? Alarian asked, gesturing to his throat where Valerius's hands hung limply. Valerius released his grip in Alarian's throat. The virulent light completely left Alarian's eyes. Both of them looked away from one another. Valerius grimaced. He had attacked Alarian out of habit. Fear, old feelings that weren't really there any longer. It had been wrong. Caden would be displeased. That was uncalled for. I, I apologize, Hilarion, Valerius forced himself to say. One of those irritating grins flashed across Hilarion's face. Ooh, that clearly hurt to say. The great Valerius apologizing. Valerius snarled. Why can you not be gracious for once? And I am sorry too, though I did nothing wrong, Hilarion said with a wry smile. This time, Valerius frowned. This time. Well, I did forget that we are not enemies anymore, and you are insanely protective and aggressive about Caden. Understandably. Valerian added the last with seeming admiration. We aren't enemies, Valerian said. You didn't make that sound too much like a question, Valerian snorted. That's something. You said it first, which is... I don't know what that is, Valerian admitted. Caden would say it is progress, Valerian shrugged. Yes, he would, Valerius agreed. Silence fell until it was broken by a faint groan. Valerian got up and went to check the bed. From Valerius's limited vantage point, he could see a bare leg only partially covered by a nightgown. There was at least one person in that bed. Landry's parents, Valerian answered his unasked question. They are still unconscious from whatever the behemoth did to them, plus being thrown about by Caden's dragon breath. Their boys are trussed over there in the corner by the closet. Valerius thought of how Caden had to keep strengthening the ice prison that held Landry. He reminded Larian not to forget their strength. Oh, I know. I am keeping an eye on them, Larian said. And there was that green glint in his irises again that boded ill if Landry's brothers so much as batted an eyelash at them. We need to get their parents' medical attention and lock Ross and Harvey up. I wonder, though, if any prison is strong enough to keep them. There would not be one strong enough to keep us, Valerius said trying to sit up again and failing miserably. His strength had clearly deserted him now. I called Shioni. People are coming, Larian said. Valerius let out a relieved breath. Good. She is handy, that one. You should be lucky I don't try to steal her from you, Valerian said. You are insane if you think she would go with you, Valerius retorted. I can be quite charming. Caden likes me, Valerian said, and there was some satisfaction in his tone. Yes, well, Caden is forgiving, Valerius muttered. Which is why he loves you, Alarian laughed. True, Valerius's eyes closed. Rosal was already deeply asleep, even though one of its forelimbs moved restlessly, looking for Ayalera to pull against it. How needy we have become, old friend, Valerius thought. No longer the single dragon. A pillow was suddenly on top of Valerius's face, he pulled it off and saw that Alarian had thrown it at him. I'm not planning on staying down here. Caden would be very angry with me if that hard head of yours is not properly supported, Alarian said. Valerius struggled, but finally got it under his head. It did feel better. Why did you come back so soon, Alarian? I truly thought you were going to stalk off for good earlier, Valerius said. I told you my plane... Caden didn't believe that, and he is trusting. I am not trusting, so don't even go there, Valerius told him. There was a long silence. Valerian was still sitting on the edge of the bed, looking down at Landry's parents, but Valerius didn't really believe Valerian was seeing them. There was a grim, almost desperate set to Valerian's jaw. 
I tell you this, I am insane, Alarian said quietly. If you tell me whatever this is, then it is important and true, Larius responded after long moments. Slowly, Alarian turned his head towards Valerius. There was raw confusion and fury there. Not at Valerius, but at something else. I cannot, cannot do it, Alarian shouted. Valerius's brow fluttered. Cannot do, keep control of my territory. The words sounded ripped out of Alarian's throat. Valerius said nothing. He knew that whatever Alarian would say next would be crucial to everything going forward. Even Raziel cracked an eyelid. Alarian got up and began to pace the end of the bed like a caged tiger. Mephis's green glow was in his eyes, but the anger was directed at a world gone mad in his mind, not at Valerius or at any particular person. Every day, no, every hour, it seems I found yet another person I cannot trust, another person to be locked away, punished, and then executed. People I have known all their lives who would have died for me in the past are now, now, untrustworthy. Valerian stated as he paced and his arms flew up into the air. We cannot live like this. I, it will not work. Yes, ruling my fear is my way, but the fear, that is all there is now. Valerius thought of the camps that President Goodfellow had told him about. He imagined instead of an evilly grinning Alarian enjoying his people's suffering, a desperate one, unable to stop the violence and unrest sweeping through his territory. He imagined Alarian instituting harsher and harsher punishments with the thought that it would slow down the uprising, but it was only delaying it. I should go back because things are slipping out of control even more. I can feel it. The reports from Homar. I do not believe them. Alarian stopped pacing and faced Valerius. I do not know what I will return home to. I fear, I fear Mephis's breath will be my last resort. Valerius shut his eyes for a moment. Valerian, do not do that. I know, I know what you think. You must be laughing inside. Pathetic Valerian, he cannot keep control of his people. He will lose his territory to humans. Valerian let out a bitter, acrid laugh. What would the great Valerius know of such weakness? Everything, Valerius answered. He opened his eyes and saw the green dragon king looking down upon him. Alarian's face was between two expressions. He was about to attack to try and stave off what he perceived would be a put-down, but he was also, and this was what Caden had somehow seen and brought out in him, looking desperately hopeful. Alarian, why do you think Rosiel and I attacked Caden and Iolair that first day? Alarius asked softly. Because he was another dragon in your territory. Alarian snorted. And? A tiny dragon? A baby dragon? How strong am I if Iolair threatens me just by existing? Valerius asked. Raziel and I have for some time felt things were out of control. Valerian's expression went thoughtful. But the bombings, Jasper Hawes, the growing inequality, the needs of those in the below and elsewhere, all plucking at me, and I had nothing to give them. No answers, no leadership. Nothing, Valerius told him, until Raziel saw a creature that we could fight, a small white dragon that fled from us, and while we were chasing it, killed a dozen people and injured far more. Does that sound like someone in control to you? I hope you're enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Many more adventures await our dragon shifter couple, but not until the next episode. If you're looking for another story full of hot heroes, romance, and magic set in an alternative world, check out the first book of my series, Cinders and Ashes. Cinders and Ashes is an elaborate gay retelling of Cinderella, but it's so much more than that. It's set in a world with forbidden magic, an heir made to work as a servant at his own estate hidden heritage, enchanted wolves, and a king who wishes to marry for love. A link to book one is in the description below. Valerian chewed his lower lip. This is not a trick question, is it? Valerius laughed and winced as his head hurt. No, my friend, it is not. Your friend, Valerian said the word as if it had a strange taste. Like you, I would have said that I could handle things on my own, but... Also, like you, I know I cannot, Valerius told him. 
It felt so strange at right confessing this to Illyrian. We were born into a simpler time, where life was cheap, including our own. We cannot respond to the problems of today with our old ways. We need to change, and we need to do it together. Illyrian laughed bitterly. I know I am not some intellectual like May or Esme of Jahara. My ways don't work. I can bring nothing to you. You're wrong, Valerius told him. He licked his lips. This was going to be difficult to say. Alarian, I've always feared that we would fight. You don't think you could win? Alarian scoffed. Only at great cost, Valerius admitted. Alarian stared. You, you admit this. You are so very strong, Alarian. You just weaken yourself by your bluster. Valerius said, You are a formidable opponent, and when I heard what you were doing to your people, I know you disapprove. I do, because it is wrong. But I thought it was because you had slipped back into the oldest ways of thinking, Valerius stated. Do you think I wish to rule over a prison? Valerian shook his head in disbelief. I just thought you wanted to rule no matter what, Valerius answered. I do. I, I don't. I don't know anymore. There is no joy. Coming here, supposedly to the house of my enemy, was the... Valerian clearly was fighting against himself for the next words, but he spit them out. Was the safest I have felt in a long time. With you, I knew I was safe. I wish that feeling was not an illusion, Valerius grimaced. It isn't! Alarian laughed a little sadly. It isn't, Valerius, and now you have Caden to protect us both. Valerius did let out a laugh then. I shouldn't laugh. It's true. He has more courage in that little form than in, well, than in our big bodies, Alarian stated. So fierce. Yes, yes, he is. They are. Valerius amended, and he said, If you wish it. I will help you with your territory. If it is not just this creature's influence, I will help. Alarian considered this. I do not see how, but I am out of ideas anyways. All I know is that I need you and Mephis to help against the behemoth. We cannot do this without you, Valerius told him, which was much like what Caden had, but cost more to say. You need me. Alarian repeated him again. Yes, I need you. You said that like you mean it, Alarian said slowly. I do. Considering I am flat on my back and cannot get up, how can you not believe me? Valerius flashed him a genuine smile. The tension that had filled Alarian bled out. He ran a hand over his head. I believe you, though I do not know what good I can do if we cannot fight, Behemoth. I don't just mean your physical strength, Valerius said. We need to help one another, not just with the behemoth, but with everything. I know the others have not said much, but I am certain they are in similar spots to you and I. May's army, Valerian said softly. One does not build so many machines if one feels secure. She trusts no one, not human or shifter, just those machines. Yes, Valerius sighed. That shows a problem, doesn't it? And Kayla, she doesn't interact much with her people, but she seems less carefree than in the past, Alarian stated as he stroked his chin. Esme missed Sarai's betrayal, perhaps because she has so many things to manage. I think Tez came here to get away from his territory. I heard him speaking to Esme about, after all of this, if he could come and stay with her, Valerius said. Anwar has been gathering information about the behemoth to bring to us, so he too knew he could not be alone in facing these things. And Jahara wants all of us to live with her, Alarian finished. Yes. Alarian then snorted. Can you imagine us all in one continent? I don't know. We've been just fine in one castle, Valerius said. Point taken. Alarian scrubbed a hand through his hair again. This feels mad, you know, trusting you. But it doesn't. Of everyone, you would not betray me. I know this. I feel this. I won't betray you. I know how much it cost you to admit what you did to me, Valeria said quietly. Wasn't easy for you either, Alarian pointed out. 
No, it was not. And yet, it was. There was a moment when we flew around the Earth thirty years ago where it seemed, well, all quite possible, Larry told him. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I felt it. Clan, pack, whatever a group of dragons would be called. If we had one, it should be something cool. Did you know a group of crows is called a murder of crows? We should have a name like that. Alarian bobbed his head as if agreeing with his own suggestion. All right, I leave it to you to fight with the others about what we're called. Valerius laughed softly. You should be called dead dragons. The behemoth's voice came out of Ross or Harvey's mouth. Valerius didn't know which. Alarian's head snapped towards them. His jaw opened and Valerius saw the beginnings of poisonous mist forming. No, wait, don't kill them, Valerius cried. Alarian grimaced, but closed his lips. I am not giving up the idea altogether. No, I know, but not yet. Don't kill them yet, Valerius said. Only if there's no hope for them. Then, then it might be a mercy, Valerius thought. He struggled to sit up again. Suddenly, Alarian's hand was in front of his face. He looked up at the green dragon king, and there was the slightest nod. Valerius gripped that hand, and Alarian hauled him to his feet and kept him steady. Valerius turned towards Ross and Harvey, who had been expertly tied up with wire hangers. That was a creative use of household implements, Ilarion, Valerius said. Wire hangers should never be used on fine clothing. Rust, Ilarion explained, so this is the only true good use for them. It was Valerius's turn to snort. Indeed. Then he turned his back on the brothers and leaned in, so only Ilarion would hear him. If they do anything like they did before, we must act. None of my powers are non-lethal either, but we must try not to kill them. Alarian merely nodded. Valerius then turned back around and stared down at the two brothers, who looked back at him sullenly. There was a nightshine of shifters in their eyes. Their rather dour, dumpy faces looked to be animated by malice that didn't quite fit them. It was the behemoth looking out at them. What are you doing here? Valerius asked. The brother to the right smirked. What are you doing here? We have every right to be here, just like you do, the brother to the left said. You want to kill everybody, so no, not quite the same, Alarian stated with a shake of his head. Don't you want to kill everybody, Alarian Mephis? The brother to the right tittered. Alarian shrugged. Sometimes, but then I play with my dogs and everything is better. Both boys laughed and it sounded like the crying of lost souls on Valerius's mind. Raziel stirred uneasily. Valerius reached out and touched Caden's mind. Everything was all right there, though he sensed that Caden was having a similar conversation with the behemoth. What are your goals? Valerius asked. Again, what are yours, Valerius Raziel? Is it not to rule over this bit of rock? The brother on the left mocked. Why should ours be so different? That made Alarian laugh. Oh, you really don't know him if you think that. He would rather brood in his castle than rule. But the people, ah, yes, the people, they want him to be in charge. He only accepts such power grudgingly. That is different from you. Valerius glanced at Alarian. This friendship between them, nascent as it was, was going to take some getting used to. That must bother you, Alarian Mephis, to have power simply given where it is not wanted, the brother to the right said. It did, Alarian admitted, which caused the behemoth great pause. But it is not his fault. He is the Black Dragon King, and that has its burdens. Valerian smiled as he looked down. Alarian did understand him. He always had. This is why I am grateful to have the support of my fellow kings and queens. Valeri said, his eyes fixed on the brothers, but you, you enslaved those at your side. All your power is stolen. The behemoth gave him twin stares of rage. The brothers spoke in unison. You know nothing. We are meant to be one. Your feelings of comradeship now are only because we are here. You sense the oneness. The helix shows the truth. Alarian shook his head and muttered, Madness. But Valerius wondered if it was madness, yet he didn't think the behemoth's interpretation of what was happening was correct. They belonged together. It's a pack, a clan, a murder of dragons. 
They weren't meant to be without one another, as he had so long believed. No, they were as one to protect this world and end the behemoth. Valerius smiled, and it was not a nice smile, at the behemoth as he answered, You have given us some insight, behemoth. We are much stronger together than apart. You have shown us that, and that will be your undoing. I hope you're enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Dragon's Reign is free for you to enjoy, but not free for us to make. There is a whole team working with me for audio editing, artwork, graphic design, and custom music. Most YouTube channels and podcasts have sponsors and take ads, but because of the kind of content we make, we can't run ads or get sponsors. Instead, we have other ways you can support me and the team behind this gay romance audiobook. One easy way is to buy or borrow my books from Amazon. They are all gay romance set in alternative worlds with vampires or shifters and other magical beings. You may not know that even if you borrow books with your Kindle Unlimited subscription at Amazon, they are free for you, but they still earn us money. The books are published under the name Ex Aratare, which actually means wraith in Romanian. And if you love audiobooks, you can get professionally narrated versions of every one of my books on audible.com. The link to my author page is in the description below, as well as to the first book of the series I think you'll really like. Thank you so much for your support. People like you enable me and the team to keep writing these stories of gay romance, magic, monsters, and true love, and producing this very fun podcast for everyone. Thank you. Thank you.